This afternoon in European Parliament, uh, we have uh, discussed the difficult questions, the hard questions around fake news, democracy, the role of internet platforms in competition. What are the opportunities for policymakers to have an effect on the internet world? And what is the hope for the European creators to flourish in this market? In the late 80s, a whole different philosophy came out. And young libertarians like Larry Page of Google, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, Peter Thiel, who was the first major investor in Facebook, uh, were schooled on the work of Ayn Rand. I know Ayn Rand is not widely known here in Europe, but she really essentially believed that government was the enemy of the entrepreneur, of the artist, of anything. And Thiel said it well. She said, I no longer believe that capitalism and democracy are compatible. But to make this happen, you needed four circumstances. One, you needed no regulation. And in the US, there was no regulation of the internet. You needed no taxes. So uh, Amazon was able to sell books with no sales taxes and put 4,000 independent bookstores out of business. And is about to put the largest bookstore chain called Browns of Noble out of business in the next few months. No copyright. So YouTube says to musicians, your content is going to be on YouTube whether you want it to or not. Um, here, sign here, and we'll give you a little bit of advertising. And I mean a little bit. And finally, no competition. Because ultimately, he realized that if you had a social network with 200 billion people or 2 billion people, you, you wouldn't need a second one if you had a search engine um, that had 2 billion people, you wouldn't need a second one. If you had an everything store like Amazon, you wouldn't need a second one. Today, the largest companies in the world by market cap are all technology companies. So what happened to the creative community while this exponential growth was going on? So as you can see, the music business was totally decimated. Revenues fell 71%. And the newspaper business was even worse. Revenues in the United States fell by 85%. We tell, talk in the US of news deserts. 40 major newspapers have shut down in the last four years. Over 200 newspapers have gone from publishing daily to publishing once a week. And many cities, there's no newspaper at all. So it's not like Facebook is going to deploy a reporter to the New Orleans Police Department to look for corruption. It's not in their interest, and it's not their business model. So it's not that people stop reading newspapers or listening to music or watching movies or reading books. It's just that the money got reallocated from the people who made content to the people who own the platforms to which you got the content. So this is the revenue of Google, Facebook, and Amazon. And you notice it goes in the exact opposite direction of the revenue charts for the creative industries. Technology is not culture, despite what some of these astroturf organizations were trying to convince the parliament that technology is culture. It is not. It's just a platform. So the power of the platform is bringing you, you know, we have just 24 hours a day and a limited capacity to, to, to search things. The platform will bring you the, the information you need. So it means different things. I mean, first, it gives a power, which is huge, because, of course, if on top of that there is only a few um, uh, platforms uh, that will direct information to you, this capacity to bring this information to you is, is, is a high, uh, powerful capacity. The second thing is that it will connect you to someone else, to, a, to an offer, to a service, or to an information. But in a sense, it's a service, it's an asset, but it bears also some risks. You know, what if the information to which you are connected is wrong? What if the service that you are connected with uh, is bad for you, is harmful, exposed or exante? So all this management of the risks and here we are discussing illegal content, which is 
one of the risks that, that can happen to you, the risk that the value that is linked to a, to a content is not paid to the creator of the content. And this is one of the risks we are uh, dealing with in Europe. We are dealing also uh, with other risks uh, linked to protection of children, uh, linked, of, linked to terrorism content, and that's very important. On safe harbor, I mean, our intention is to eradicate safe harbor. I say that openly. To eradicate safe harbor, we have to put that to an end. It's not going to work, it's reflecting a time which was meant for something different, and it was uh, one of the biggest um, interference into commercial law, systematically or structurally, but in practical terms it, it, it ruins creators and IP rights, and it's it suggests that it's legal to have a different stand on on IP rights, copyright, and so on, so in the virtual world than it's in the real world. The commercial angle is simply, do we really talk about upload filters? No, we really talk about that YouTube doesn't want to pay. And it makes it living in an, from my point of view, obscure and not even related to an idea of a market economy way out of that to the disadvantages of artists and creativity in Europe and to the disadvantage of the European economy. And that's not acceptable. And it would be easy, I mean, if you see the agreements YouTube is, is striking with, with creators or collective society, it's a joke, it's a mockery of, of a market system. We created a monopoly and this monopoly is sucking up our economic value in Europe. So, and the second aspect is what do we expect from, from platforms? Um, is it so obscure to say they have to deal with that? I mean, what happened is it's triggering racism. It's triggering gender discrimination. It's triggering an obscure perception of the world. Um, it's triggering things we would never expect. It, the last time public executions had been popular in Europe had been in the Middle Age. So, I mean, what we can expect um, in the light of, of, of modern, free, liberal, um, uh, constitutionally driven or, or, or the, by, the, by the European treaties driven societies is that they play by the rules. It can't be that we throw away everything we were working on after the 20th century practically within a decade because for the sake of it's free. For me, Culture uh, and media as part of that needs to be, we need to reclaim it for the common good, but we need to make sure that people who, who are artists primarily are able to earn a living from the work that they do. And platforms are going to have to accept that. They need to accept that because otherwise all we're going to have is the same old, same old, same old. And we're not going to have European content. We're not going to have that extraordinary richness of diversity that we can have because we're Europeans. <laughs>